Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of The Verdict, which will take you from Haydock to Newbury and then to Sandown at the weekend, ending with the Coral Eclipse. So we will assess that race at the end of the show, but we are going to start at Haydock Park midweek with an interesting novice performance. Now, here are the winners and the times from the card on Thursday. Typical woman, Refuge, Elena Dashwood, Significantly, Mullishar and DCR, all of your winners. The ground, according to those times, was good and the best time on the day was put up by Significantly, heading from the very much informed Carl Burkyard. But it's Mullishar who I want to focus on, who completed the seven furlongs in 128. 0.69, 3.79 outside the Racing Post standard. The Godolphin trained Hidden Pass was favourite at even money. Juan Torino was 5 to 2. Mulishar, a 6 to 1 shot. Tribal Rhythm, 11s and 14s, and bigger the rest. So let's have a look and see what unfolded here. Mulishar was the winner. He came out of stall 9, so widest of all for Mulishar. Hidden Pass from 6, shaped pretty well in second place. Third home was Juan Torino from 2, and uh, Tribal Rhythm was uh, from eight in fourth place and a horse possibly for a racing TV tracker. Right, let's have a look and see what transpired out on the track once they got going. Uh, Murashar, the winner, has missed the kick in the Shadwell colours. Slowly into stride and then tucked in at the back by Jim Crowley, trying to go the shortest way round if he could. And already he's got a real big task on his hands. The runner-up is sat in second place in the Godolphin Blue, travelling nicely and really has a massive positional advantage over Murashar. We'll stop it there. There's the winner and there's the second. So Murashar has done very well to win. And when you look at the course track sectionals, they will tell you that this was a steadily run race. So you upgrade Murashar quite a lot. The finishing speed percentage, 110.7. So they've crawled early on and then they have sprinted in the closing stages. And Murashar has done very well to get up and win. 10.7% quicker in the final three furlongs than he was in the rest of the race. Hidden Pass has got the run of the race. This is a, a newcomer for Godolphin, who shapes really well here, but will get run down by Murashar, who finishes very strongly. A final three furlongs of 34.18, much quicker than anything else in the race and was fastest in the final couple of furlongs, starting from now. The sixth furlong, 11.49. The seventh furlong, 11.72. But at this point, whilst he is really winding up and firing a fast furlong of 11.49, he's got a lot to do. He's trying to reel in horses that are not stopping in front of him. And he's got, what, three, four lengths at least to make up in the closing stages. But watch how he picks up uh, late on. Really impressive. How he goes on in the closing stages. Tribal Rhythm's the horse to the outside. He's run an eye-catching race. He was fastest through the fourth and the fifth furlongs in this race. But look at Murashar pick up in the closing stages, right down on the inside. For a moment, it looked like Jim Crowley felt the game was up as Hidden Pass quickened in front. But uh, this horse, once the penny dropped, finished off his race very impressively indeed you can see now jim crowley looking for a run on the outside but he's green and he hangs to his left under pressure jim's not really gone for him whipping his left hand to try and keep the horse straight but he wants to go to his left this fella and eventually jim just hands and heels will find a gap down on the inside and i think at this point he was thinking well i might be third but this horse picks up in such good style in the closing stages that he's able to get up and win the horse on the outside, Tribal Rhythm, who finishes fourth, I would urge you to put him in your racing TV tracker. He was the fastest through the fourth furlong, 11.7, and fastest through the fifth furlong of this race at 10.95. But nothing was faster than this fella through the final couple of furlongs, the sixth and the seventh furlong, where he was very impressive indeed. He picked up in fine style, despite greenness. He should be able to win under a penalty, or maybe... They'll step him up uh, markedly in grade after this impressive performance. OK, let's turn our attention to Newbury on Thursday now. Uh, an interesting card. And the race I want to focus on is the 640, which was won by Bahir. This is a six furlong two-year-old contest. He produced a very good time, the fastest time of the night on this particular card. It was Division 2 of this novice stakes, and he went off the 2-1 to favourite. Count Palatine, 9 to 4, 7 to 2, Sinusure, well backed actually. Mitwa, 11 to 2, a big drifter. And it was 9 to 1 and bigger the rest. But it was Bahir who prevailed for Pat Dobbs and Richard Hannan. He came out of stall number two. 
Second home was Al Jazeera from stall number five. And third was uh, Count Palatine from stall number three. OK, this is quite impressive. This is a, a good sprinting two-year-old, I think. This is his second career start. He was well-touted and well-backed on his debut, but he was too green to do himself justice and was defeated into second place. Well, he's a lot better here. And this is a real dominant display from him out in front. And Pat Dobbs managed to dictate an even tempo on this fella. He's uh, got a finishing speed percentage of 103.6. So it's not a it's not a crawl, it's not a flat-out gallop. It's pretty even, really, for two-year-olds here at Newbury over six furlongs. And he is never headed at all. And he's pretty strong through the final couple of furlongs. He was at 11.26 in the fifth. That's what sealed the deal. That's what really got them at it in behind. And then he was able to finish off in 12.19. Both of those furlongs quicker than all of his rivals uh, in behind. See here, they're all at it. And Dobbs has not really moved on this fella yet. And when he asks him to go, he fires at 11.26 to about now. And then he's a 12.19 from here on in. But they're really well strung out. And for a, a two-year-old performance, he's got to put this down as being pretty impressive. There is one horse to mark up, and he's almost out of shot. This is Mitwa. This is a horse who deserves a sectional upgrade because he flashed a bit of ability in the middle of the race. His fourth furlong was 11.18. Now, that's a quicker furlong than this fella in shot. The winner managed to do throughout the race. So Mitwa flashed a really quick furlong. That was the fourth furlong, but he was held up. He was a bit keen in the early part of the race, and whilst he flashed that ability, he wasn't able to back it up with another quick furlong and go and challenge the easy winner, but he still showed that he's got plenty of speed and plenty of ability. So Mitwa, definitely a horse to keep an eye on uh, going forward. But you can see from the body language of the jockeys here that Pat Dobbs is not doing a right lot on this very fast two-year-old uh, Bahir and he just really nudges him out, hands and heels, in the closing stages. It, it begs the question, where next? Well, a sprint race like the Malkin, like the Flying Childers, they might well be on the agenda uh, for the Hannon team. It's a possibility that they'll go to Goodwood. They like to run two-year-olds there, so that could be the place uh, where he'll go. But his main asset, he's by Maymas, he's always going to be speed. He's got a, an absolute ton of it. He's learnt a lot from his debut effort. They clearly knew they had something on debut, but he was too green to do himself justice. But now he knows what this game is all about, and he's very much ready for a step up in grade. This was really impressive. Let's turn our attentions now from Newbury to Sandown Park, the start of the Coral Eclipse meeting, the Friday meeting, where the ground was a little bit easier than it was on Coral Eclipse Day. Those times there suggesting it was probably just a good ground, maybe slightly on the easier side of good on the round course. Dream Composer took the opening sprint, and we're going to have a look at um, three performances here, Killian, Yabir, and Starlaw. And we'll start with the two-year-old uh, Killian, 2.30 contest. Went through in 59.7, exactly the same time as Dream Composer, older horse, managed to post in the opening contest. So that overall time is telling us that this was a good performance. Visually, it certainly was, and I think the numbers point to that as well. Born to Rock was the favourite at 6-4. Killian, 9-4. Hala Emirati, 11-2. And 17-2. Nazlan, pretty well backed. 11s and bigger the rest. But it was Killian, a rare ride for Ryan Moore, riding for Carl Burke. And often see those two combining. Carl Burke's got his horses in tremendous form uh, at the moment, and Ryan guides this horse to success. But it was a, it was a quite a hard fought success given the trip that he got in the race. There he is from stall uh, number three. Now this is quite a strongly run affair. They didn't uh, hang about. We saw a good sprinting two-year-old uh, at Newbury uh, in Bahia, um, and his numbers were quicker than the numbers we're going to see here. But this is because this is an uphill five furlong, so they're not going to produce the same sort of figures that he could do on a, on a flat track. Nonetheless, they were pretty impressive. At this point, uh, Nazalan's taking him along towards the... Well, he's towards the four. There's a bit of a pace duel going on, and the winner is sat in here. Ryan Moore's just going to sit and be patient and wait for a bit of a run down on the inside. But he gets loads of trouble in running, and I think Killian does well to, to get out and win this race, but win it so decisively as well points to the fact that he's probably very useful. The finishing speed percentage, evidence of the strong pace. The winner was 101.26. He just came home just over 1% quicker than he ran the rest of the race. Now switched out by Ryan Moore. He comes home very strongly. He was the only horse to dip under 12 seconds in the penultimate furlong, the fourth furlong. That's what he's doing now. He's firing 11.55 as Ryan's got hold of him once he's in the clear. 
and then he comes out to a ready six length winner in the end. Um, so it's quite impressive on the numbers, he quickened up really well, off a strong pace. But I think you've got to mark him up because of the trip that he got through the race. I know Ryan was looking for a, a gap down on the inside and like all world-class jockeys do, he made his decision very quickly uh, to switch and that was the race winning move. But for this horse to be able to come from the position he was in, switch wide, quicken up and beat his listed rivals by six lengths, I think that marks him out to be quite, an, quite a good two-year-old sprinter. See Ryan there, he sat in looking for a, a little bit of running room down on the inside. He gets to the three and he's beginning to think he's not going to get anywhere to go. He's just stuck in, completely stuck. And he does make a decisive decision, which wins him the race. He switches this fella out and he quickens up in good style. Three furlongs uh, sectional was 36.1. Now the next best in the race was 37.14. So that third furlong, he's miles quicker. He's over a second quicker than his rivals through that one singular furlong. So he has quickened up in very good style. And Ryan's not had to be too hard on him in the end. Hackman was in second place. He came out still seven. Nazalan, who forced or was up with that early pace, has done well. He kept up, he kept up the gallop. He kept going, and he finished a good third. He's just in front of us. Look at it now in those green colours. But here comes Ryan Moore on Killian. He dwarfed his rivals in the parade ring uh, beforehand. He was a really good-looking individual, and he's very fast. There's absolutely no doubt about that. And he's. Um, worth a step up in grade now. He does hold a number of entries in sales races, so they might be going down the, the, the prize money route with him, and you wouldn't blame them either. But look, he's a good looking individual. He's done this very well indeed. He's by invincible spirit. He's got a, a real sprinting pedigree, and I think he's a very nice two year old. Okay, let's stay at Sandown on Friday afternoon. The Coral Marathon is the race we're going to have a look at now. It's a listed race over two miles and 50 yards. Yubir, uh, he was the threes on favourite. Ocean Wind coming back off a, a very long layoff, over two years off the track, 11 to 2, Sleeping Line 9 to 1, 11s RD, Raymond Tusk 28s, and Esther Cass a 50 to 1 shot. And it was Yubir who got the job done here for Charlie Appleby and William Buett, but not uh, without a few palpitations for those that uh, took the very short odds about him. Stall number four is where he came from. Starts quite significant. Uh, our day was second from two, and Ocean Wind shaped very well after his long layoff in stall at number three. Now watch your beer here. He's going to get a bump and get squeezed out there. And it's just now going to fire him up. So if you keep an eye on him, you'll see how keen he is for a few strides. And William Buick does pretty well. There he is, throwing his head around. He does well to get him settled and get him relaxed and stop him being too keen and using up. Uh, too much energy. Adia has taken them along towards the far side and Sleeping Lion, who jumped from the widest gate, is being allowed to just drift across gradually by Ryan Moore and then Sleeping Lion will end up in front and make uh, the running here. Yabir dropped out last and this is the way they ride him. Um, of course he's won, a, he's won a, a Breeders' Cup at Turf at uh, Del Mar and he came from off the pace there and that short straight and was really impressive with his finishing kick. So they like to ride in Chile. They did so in the Ascot Gold Cup, over two and a half miles. I think they were wary of the trip there. And he did run on past horses late on without ever looking like he was going to get involved. And they've stuck with a staying trip for him at this two miles. Seems to be about right for him uh, now. And I think he's a bit more impressive than it looked on the day. He looked to make quite hard work of beating a deer and ocean wind and he hits a bit of a flat spot when they went into the home straight but um, the numbers tell us that he was actually quite dominant through this race he was fastest through four of the last five furlongs so the final five furlongs through four of them he was quickest the only one he wasn't the quickest in was the last one when ocean wind was actually the quickest horse through that final furlong but Yabir had the race put to bed by that stage um, once they've turned into the into the straight, William Buick gets quite animated with him. And I just think he's a horse who takes a while to pick up. He's just a horse that needs a bit of urging. You've got to really ask him, but he does eventually respond. It just takes a while to find uh, top gear. But, uh, when he does, he's um, a very useful individual. And this might just signal that he's on his way back and possibly the Goodwood Cup might be something Connections will have a look at now that they know that uh, two miles is okay for him. It wasn't um, a fierce gallop. It was just a, an even tempo set by Ryan Moore, as you perhaps might expect. Best placed in the race was the runner-up, 
Adi, who um, does run a very good race to hold on for second place ahead of Ocean Wind. Ocean Wind sat in uh, about fourth place at this stage. They're about to swing into the home straight, and this is where your beer will just come off the bridle a little bit once the pace begins to pick up. You see Holly Doyle just pushing away on the second horse now. Ryan Moore's just starting to wind it up here. And you can see William Bukes just got a little bit lower in the saddle there on your beer. Look, he's just niggling away at him, but it's not really a flat spot with him because we know from the numbers that he's now going to run faster than everything through the rest of the race. His 13th furlong, 12.17. His 14th furlong, 12.08. Those furlongs took him to the front. And his final three furlongs was way better than the rest, 38.79. Much better than any of his rivals. This is where he's quite impressive because he's almost come back on the bridle now, you beer. William's not doing much now. He was doing more turning for home on the bend. He's doing very little on him now. And then he asks him to go and beat uh, Adia and he, he picks up okay and runs on strongly enough. At this stage, I thought Jim Crowley here on Ocean Wind had settled for, settled, uh, for third spot, but um, I think he sort of sees that Adia's getting a little bit tired and Jim asks Ocean Wind for one little effort, one last effort, if you like, um, to go and get second place, and he almost gets there. So that's a really encouraging run from uh, Ocean Wind. Roger Teal will be delighted with uh, that performance. Yeah, Jim, I think he thinks he's going to nick second, so he just keeps at him. He, he knew he had third um, third place books, but he just thought he'd have a, a crack for second, but he didn't quite get up. But for me, your beer, although some people were not impressed, they said, well, he's threes on, he should win, he should bolt up, he should do it easily. I don't think he's ever a horse who's going to really impressed with a sharp turn of foot. He probably could have done with a slightly stronger tempo. That might have helped him. But I don't think he's done much here. William Buick's just nudging him out. The rest of them are all absolutely flat out in behind. Um, I think this horse just does what he's got to do. He just does enough. And the numbers tell us that he was dominant through the final five furlongs. And it was just ocean wind quicker than him in the final furlong, running on under that Crowley's urgings to try and get second place. But look at uh, William, he's not issued a reminder behind the saddle, uh, I don't think at any point. It's just hands and heels. And um, this might do you be a good day. He's got his head in front. I'm not a great believer in confidence and momentum and that sort of thing as far as uh, a horse's form is concerned. I think uh, he's won, but um, I think that's he's entitled to really, given the dropping grade that he had here. And I think he enjoyed the step up in trip. So better than the bare result is exactly what I'd say about your beer and his performance at Sandown on Friday. So we'll stay at Sandown on Friday and have a look at the Irish Talent Farms EBF Novice Stakes over seven furlongs. Newcomer Arabian Crown had been all the rage earlier in the day. It was a bit of a drifter just before the off. Evens out to five to four. Judge Frank, 92 shot. That was the horse that was quite well backed. He had previous experience compared to Arabian Crown who's making his debut. Star Lord debutant as well, nine to two. Happy Chandler eights from 12s and it was 12s. And big up the rest for this seven furlong contest. I think this is going to... Uh, throw up quite a lot of winners this race. I think it's quite a decent uh, novice stakes. It was won by Star Law, stall three uh, for Ryan Moore and Sir Michael Stout, son of Kingman, on his debut. Maximum Dividend from 10 was in second place, and Arabian Crown from seven was third in the Godolphin Blue. So let's see how this race unfolded. Um, it's a nice performance from Star Law on debut. Um, sent to the four by Ryan Moore early on, it urged this horse to go forward in the early part of the race and just sat uh, nice and handy. Um, we'll pick him out just in behind. Here he is. And then Arabian Crown and Maximum Dividend. There's Maximum and there's Arabian Crown, the Godolphin horse. And both of these horses in second and third will be winning in the near future, I think, particularly Arabian Crown when he is stepped up to a mile. I think that's really going to suit this son of uh, Dubawi. But overall, I think this is going to be very a solid form. The race has run at a fair gallop, 104.26%, the finishing speed percentage, so the winner finishing off just over 4% quicker in the final three furlongs than he ran the rest of the race. He wasn't the quickest in the final furlong though, he was being closed down uh, by the second and third maximum dividend and Arabian Crown. Maximum dividend just being urged in behind the winner at this stage and then he comes back on the bridle. Arabian Crown, he's been very green in the Godolphin blue. Wait, wait till he's switched out and look at the way he finishes his race off. He finishes off really well. But Star Lord's got first run to a degree. Here comes Ryan in the pink cap. He goes first and look at the gap between him, for example, and Arabian Crown. It's quite a way back to Arabian Crown. He's got first jump on Arabian Crown. He's just been too green to lie handy. 
didn't really pick up the bridle at all and he's also got a, a length or so on maximum dividend. The second and third they both come home quicker than the winner. Their final three furlongs were quicker than Star Laws. Uh, the winner was 39.6, the second and third both faster, 35.64, 36.47. So they were both quicker. That's because Star Law idles a bit and gets a bit tired, I think, in the closing stages. And they were both getting there late on. He really did weaken in that final furlong, but I suspect there was a, there was a bit of idling as well. He'd seen daylight for quite a long way, Star Law, and um, I think there'll be more to come from him. He could easily defy a penalty. I think, but I was really taken with the Arabian Crown in third place. His final three furlongs, the fastest in the race, 36.47. And uh, he's trying to close in on a winner who was able to run 11.94 in the sixth furlong, quickened up up the hill to 11.94. So it's hard for Arabian Crown and Maximum Dividend to close him down because he got first run and he posted a quick furlong in the sixth furlong, the penultimate furlong. So it's always going to be hard to run Starlord or down, but they nearly did as he idled and got tired in the closing stages. And just look at this Jabari Colt coming home from the outside of the field. I think up to a mile, uh, he's going to be very interesting. I mean, he won't have been missed by, by many people and he'll be a short price when he runs, runs next, but he could be a pretty useful horse to, to keep an eye on. But there's Ryan on Starlaw. Ryan's enjoying a real good time of it uh, at the moment. And Starlaw responded to his urgings, taking it up about, about two and a half out and then quickening up pretty well that 11.94 shot him clear of his field and then he was being reeled in late on by two surefire winners next time up back some dividend for the Hannon team Arabian Crown for Charlie Appleby I'm particularly keen on the third and that's what the numbers point to as well the numbers say that he was finishing his race very strongly indeed once he got the hang of things way too green in the early part of the contest to do himself justice a very nice novice stakes from Sandown on Friday well, the big race of the weekend was the Coral Eclipse. It took place at Sandown on Saturday. Here are the winners and the times. You can see that the times were uh, quicker on the Saturday than they were on the Friday. That was because of the watering that had taken place and the rain that had fallen earlier in the week as well. But um, good to firm ground, you would say, from those times for the Coral Eclipse. Won by Paddington and he dipped under standard. He was nearly two seconds under, 1.84 uh, under standard. He is the real deal, make no mistake. Let's have a look at the market and see where he was. Well, he was pretty well backed in the end. There were sort of joint favourites midweek coming into this race, but he was really well supported in the lead up to the race and went off 8 to 11. Emily up John 85 to 40. 8 to 1 Dubai on and nibbled at, and a bit of money for the West Wind Blows for those that uh, like horses that might potentially get an easy lead out in front, and that was probably the theory behind West Wind Blows. So it was Paddington who prevailed. We'll send him on the way. It's a funny angle for the stalls, but we'll um, send him on the way. He jumps first, as Mark Johnson said in the call. He won the break. He was first out of the stalls, but Jamie Spencer keen to get to the front on the perennial front runner West Wind Blows, and Ryan Moore is happy to let him do so, happy to take a sit and drop in behind. This was, this was dubbed as, not a great place to stop it there, was it? This is a, dubbed as a bit of a duel, and I think that's exactly what it was between him and Emily Upjohn, who tracked him under uh, William Buick. No, Frankie suspended, of course. Um, Emily was uh, coming back down in trip after her coronation success, and they took the hood off, perhaps to try and make her a little bit sharper over this trip. And of course, Paddington was stepping up in trip after his Irish Guineas win and St James's Palace stakes win and he looked sure to be suited by a mile and a quarter and that uh, was definitely proved right and Emily Upjohn I think she ran pretty well in defeat it does what it says on the tin this race really best horse beats second best horse in the race for me Emily Upjohn had been really impressive in the coronation you remember how she quickened up in fine style we analyzed it on the verdict and she fired some sub 11 second furlongs in the coronation stakes over a mile and a half she couldn't do that here um, because they went a stronger gallop, basically, uh, in this race, and they took more petrol out of her. The coronation was a crawl, and it turned into a sprint. She saved loads of fuel, and then she flashed her speed and her brilliance uh, in that race thereafter. Well, she didn't have as much in the tank this time when they really picked up, because they'd gone quite an honest gallop out in front. The pace increased from a 12.16 when they turned in to the home straight to an 11.66 furlong. He's going to do it now, Paddington, from the three to the two, 11.66. Emily Upjohn is already under the pump in behind. Remember, she can rub, run sub 11 second furlongs. We know that. But she didn't have enough in the tank because of the gallop that they went. 
and Paddington's just too strong. He's too quick, he fired that furlong, she tried to chase, and thereafter, she didn't have enough left to reel him in. It was pretty tight in the end, but both of them showing willing attitudes, a great fight, a great tussle, and Ryan Moore prevails just half a length ahead of uh, Emily Upjohn. I think John Gosden said of Emily Upjohn afterwards that there were no excuses that she's run, she's run well, she's run a big race, just beaten by a better horse and an improving horse. There's no doubt about that. To think he started this season in a handicap is absolutely amazing. He's won five of his last, or five of his six career starts and uh, three group ones on the bounce now for him in Ireland, then at Royal Ascot and now this uh, Coral Eclipse. He really is uh, a bit of a superstar, this fella, uh, and he's improving uh, run by run. This final time that he produced here was very, very good. Only horse to dip under standard on the day, so the overall time was good, telling us a lot about that early gallop. He quickened up well. He fired a really good quick furlong of 11.66. The question now, though, is will he go back to a mile or will he possibly uh, stay at 10 furlongs? Uh, the mile, of course, he's in the Sussex Stakes. He could, he could go for that at, to Goodwood or mile and a quarter Judmont, possibly. Irish champion, that might be where they want to go with him. Perhaps Irish champion thoughts depend on what's uh, going to happen with August Rodin because I'm sure they'll want to win a a group one over 10 with him if they possibly can. But this horse is um, perhaps uh, he's gone under the radar just a little bit because he started life in a handicap, but he's he's really, really good, I think, and he's getting better and better. And Ryan wasn't too hard on him there. To beat Emily up, John, remember, you know, she was an unlucky runner up in an Oaks. She's won a coronation. That's a, that's a big performance from this three year old in a race where there were no excuses. The pace was honest. You couldn't make any excuses for Emily Upjohn at all. She sometimes can pull. She didn't this time. She settled. She relaxed. She gave herself a chance. But she just wasn't good enough to get by Paddington. The winner of the Coral Eclipse 2023 and a worthy one at that. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this week's edition of The Verdict. We had a look at a couple of really fast two-year-olds. Killian at Sandown and Bahir at uh, Newbury as well. We saw a good novice at uh, Sandown Park. Uh, that will work out uh, very well indeed. Arabian Crown, the one to take out of that. Stick that horse in your racing TV tracker. I thought your beer in the Coral Marathon was better uh, than the bear result. I think there might be more to come from him. He could be interesting in the, the Goodwood Cup, possibly. And Paddington, well, he's just a superstar. That's it uh, for me on The Verdict here for a, a few weeks. Nick Lightfoot and James Moon take, taking over in the next couple of weeks uh, while, while I have a, a well-earned rest. The Verdict Extra column will be on the website on Wednesday. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Subscribe to Racing TV's YouTube channel now to watch more great races like this.